Thank you for speaking with me today, and we'll keep it brief uh, because I know you have an appointment. But before we, we're going to talk about the propers just briefly, and so people can begin to learn a little bit about them. Before sure. we speak about them, Father, and I'm, I'm going to say my piece, and, and you tell me if you think I have it right, but can you just briefly kind of talk about where you're situated? You have two parishes, is that correct? Well, actually, it's one parish that was born out of two that were merged. So what they basically did is suppress two parishes, St. Teresa of the Infant Jesus and St. Maria Goretti, two very young and vibrant saints. Um, and we combined the two parishes into one parish, which is now called Holy Child Parish. It's in the Diocese of Camden in a city called Runnymede, New Jersey. It's just really outside of Philadelphia, if anybody's kind of wondering where that's at. So you're basically a priest that's very much a quote-unquote normal priest. I mean, you have a you have a parish, and you have parish duties. Is that correct? That would be correct. I'm the assistant pastor, curate, parochial vicar, whatever they want to call me these days. I'm the, the worker bee of the parish. <laughs> well, before we get to the propers, just one really, really brief question. Is it true that you also... Did you know Father Benedict Groeschel? Yes, I spent 16 years as a Franciscan prior of the renewal. Um prior to joining the diocese. Um, so uh, my, basically all of my priestly and uh, spiritual formation uh, came through the Franciscan prior to the renewal, and I'm very grateful for that. Well, that's wonderful. I've, I've known about him for a long time, and I've admired him, but I've never had an opportunity to meet him. Is, he's, is he still doing well? Well, um, he's pretty much uh, uh, taking it easy now, as much as he is capable, uh, taking things easy. His health is not very good. Um, okay. And, 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 yeah, and he, he can't always think clearly and speak what he's thinking. I see, I see. Well, let's let's go on to the propers here. Basically, let me uh, say my piece, and then you tell me if you're wrong and if you agree. Basically, the way I look at it is that, you know, each Mass uh, in, in the New Rite has three readings on the major Sundays and feast days. The first reading, the second reading, and the, and the, and the Gospel. And that is correct. Um, you know, no one would ever think of, like, replacing them. For example, instead of the first reading, to have a reflection by, for example, let's say, Marty Haugen, or Marty Hogan, however his name is properly pronounced, um, who is incidentally not a Catholic, but is actually someone who writes a lot of music that's used in Catholic churches. No one would sure. think to say, let's, let's scrap the first reading and replace it with some reflections by a non-Catholic. Or, for example, the second reading. Let's scrap the second re reading and replace it uh, with a theological reflection by whoever. You name somebody, some, some current Mr. person. Betty Boop. <laughs> sure, someone, you know, just someone who's still, you know, very much alive and very much current. Um, because that's just not done. The proper thing is to read the scripture readings that are assigned. And so yeah. my thing is when I think about this, we have the propers that are assigned, basically five of them for each Mass. Pretty much there's always five. There's one or two exceptions, like when, when you have a sequence in there. But what's been happening for, I guess, 40 years now, is people scrap what the Church assigns there, the Scripture readings that have been prayed for 1,500, 1,600, 1,700 years, 100 years, and replace those with, for example, you know, a hymn or a song, oftentimes written by a modern composer. Sometimes they're Catholic, sometimes they're not. And it begins to get to the point where musicians are saying, why are we, it's almost like you're making up the Mass. It's almost like you're creating the Mass. So I guess what I'm asking sure. you is, is it, what I'm saying, is that making any sense? Because people, it's easy to lose people when you're speaking about this subject. So is this making any sense? Well, yeah, I think you're making perfect sense, uh, Jeff. Uh, I, I, you know, most people I would uh, argue don't even know that there is such a thing as a mass proper uh, for for instance for an intro or or for communion um, you know so people uh, people just don't know that these things exist if you go to certain seminaries uh, I went to St. Joseph's Seminary Dunwoody uh, in Yonkers New York uh, we learned about the intro uh, and the options that were available but uh, even having learned it uh, to some degree, we did use that in the seminary, but um, but outside the seminary, it just doesn't uh, tend to happen. And I think your analogy is very, very accurate and very pointed and very good. 
uh, you wouldn't take, um, you know, the Gospel of uh, St. John or, uh, you know, the writings of St. Paul or the Exodus and uh, even give a an oral interpretation of it, you would use the sacred text as the sacred text. Mm-hmm. So, you know, as it, as it is the inspired Word of God. And so in our Catholic tradition, we have uh, this treasure chest of, uh, of of uh, music that is uh, generally rooted in Gregorian chant, which the Church teaches has a private place, uh, incidentally because it was very singable. Uh, people think they, they hear the term Gregorian chant and they think these very melismatic kind of operatic-sounding hymns, but the, the most ancient hymns of the Church uh, were, were very simple and very melodic uh, hymns that uh, are basically very easy to sing. You know, they're uh, in 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 uh, key signatures that people can sing quite naturally and easily, um, and incidentally, you know that sa- that same music uh, has been the inspiration of all musical development in the Western world, including uh, jazz, not opera, and uh, rock and roll. For that matter, people sure. don't realize it all flowed out of Gregorian chant, and we end right. up with Marty Hogan, and we end up with. Uh, uh, Michael Jonkis and the St. Louis Jesuits and, uh, you know, show, show tune sounding masses, which, uh, you know, are really, uh, I think, uh, a caricature of what's supposed to be. Sure, um, and I should, I should interject, if I could interject, Father, I, did, yeah. I didn't want to single anybody out or pick on anybody, especially since I don't know those people. I just thought it would be appropriate to mention somebody, for example, Marty Haugen, or H- Hogan, again, I don't know how to pronounce his name, but he's used so commonly and so frequently, I thought it would be uh, easier for people to understand if I used a real example, but again, always being careful that I'm not trying to single anyone out or judge anyone's motives. Uh, it's just to try yeah. to get to, to try to try get across to people what's actually happening. Sometimes I think it's better to use real examples, if, if you would agree with that, Father. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that, and I would also clarify that I am in no way uh, intending to uh, speak ill of those artists and what they are attempting to do. The question is, is, is not as much that as much as it is what is appropriate for the Mass. Mm-hmm. Um, we do know that there was a lot of experimentation, a lot of things that kind of happened in the wake of the spirit of Vatican II, and um, music uh, has, 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 uh, has suffered as a result of it. Um, there have been successes as well, you know. Um, I think the, one of the, the, the sad parts now uh, that I see with the new Roman Missal 3rd edition is that uh, we have some of those mass settings, for example, um, mm-hmm. again, without singling anything out, um, that we're now trying to force uh, the new translation into the old melodies, which <laughs> yeah. uh, just, they just don't work. <laughs> Uh, they just don't work, uh, yeah. you know. Uh, even even one that I you know that I might have liked before to some degree, you know, now it just it doesn't work. It's you yeah, know? it's very much the opposite so. of inspiration in in that regard. Listen, Father, I, I, I promise I would keep it short so I should try to be a man of my word. There's a lot of other things that I would welcome an opportunity, perhaps at some time in the future to speak to you about, and I think others would be interested in, in hearing what we're, we're talking about, because, again, this is comes as a re- revelation to some. Um, but like I say, I, there's so many more subjects I want to talk about. I want to talk a little about the Psalms and about the new collection I'm bringing out, but maybe we should um, perhaps wrap it up for now. Yeah, that's great, and as I said, Jeff, you can feel free to call me anytime, uh, and uh, spontaneity is always good. I, I, I actually uh, appreciate that very <laughs> well, I, I just like finding priests that are interested in restoring these beautiful traditions. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's great no to problem. speak to you, and I appreciate the time. God bless you now. Thanks, Father. Okay.